Please welcome our first speaker of the day. She is the newly elected Arizona State Senate President, Senator Karen Pham. Thank you all very much. Let's see where this mic is here. Good afternoon, colleagues, regents, educators, leaders, and friends. It is truly an honor today to be speaking to you about the Penny for Arizona's Education Future event. Today, I do not plan to speak about the past. Rather, I am excited to speak and discuss the future. But before I begin in my formal remarks, since there are some new friends in the audience and I am new to the role of Senate President, Phil Francis, John Whiteman, Mike Brewer, and their CEO coalition asked me to please take a few moments to share a little bit about myself. My family has done business in Arizona for generations. In fact, my father used to buy heavy equipment from John Whiteman and his family. My brother Mike now assumes that role and still does work with the Whiteman family. I am a small business owner. I own a highway construction company myself in Guardrail. I have 40 employees, and I can tell you one of the hardest things I have and all of us have in our business these days is finding qualified workers. And that's why I am such a huge supporter of JTED and CTE and education in general. We cannot have good economy, thriving businesses without well-educated team members, and employees. I am a previous vice mayor for the city of Prescott. I am a three-term mayor for the town of Chino Valley. As a local elected official, I can tell you firsthand that you cannot have healthy communities without healthy schools. And healthy schools means having parents and your neighbors, everybody involved in making sure that our kids are growing up in safe environments and they are learning the tools they need to be pro progressive and, and successful students and, and leaders in the future. So I ask for your help with that. I have served three terms in the House of Representatives and I am now in my second term in the Senate and will be serving as Senate President. I am honored and thrilled. I have the most amazing colleagues both in the Senate and the House to be working with and I call on all of them to let's put our politics aside, roll up our sleeves, and find a great solution for moving Arizona forward and funding education. Today's event is about funding Arizona's education future, and I feel privileged to join the president of the nation's largest university, Dr. Michael Crow, and Alan Jones, the Arizona president for Lennar Homes, the nation's largest home building company, as they highlight the importance of funding in-state tuition and trade and workforce development for our community colleges. I am here to share with you the importance of investing in our public schools. A strong Arizona economy begins with a strong and appropriately funded K through 12 education system. As a business person, city councilwoman, mayor, and state legislator, I have been a consistent advocate for investing in Arizona's classrooms. Last year, I was, proud, I was a proud supporter of Governor Ducey's 20 by 2020 plan, as well as the effort by State Senator Kate Brophy McGee to ensure that the school's 6 tenths percent sales tax for Arizona schools did not end. But we must, we must do more. That is why I am supportive of the recent proposals by Kate Brophy McGee and our chair of the Senate Education Committee, State Senator Sylvia Allen, to send a one cent sales tax to the 2020 ballot. With this, Arizonans once again have the opportunity to invest in Arizona's education system. But I've been asked to address Senator Allen's proposal today. Her proposal is powerful because it's simple. A constitutional amendment to create a permanent, voter-protected, dedicated funding source for Arizona schools that will generate over $1 billion. That is per year in funding. 
hundreds of millions of dollars more than expi that are more than expiring in Prop th Proposition 301 with greater flexibility for Arizona school districts, greater access for Arizonans to attend universities, and greater investment in the workforce development of our local economies through our community colleges. Focusing on our K through 12 education system, Arizona is now in a, re in a reading crisis with nearly 50% of our children unable to re read at the third grade level by the end of third grade. One of the things I like best about Sen Senator Allen's proposal is that not only does it double the amount of money currently being invested in Arizona's class classroom site fund from 400 to 800 million dollars, but it also provides tremendous flexibility for local school districts to make local decisions, investing in local priorities and exercising local control. One great example of this flexibility is the opportunity for districts to fund voluntary full-day kindergarten. I will be the first to admit that years ago, I was not a fan of full-day kindergarten. Frankly, I remembered the days when, for some, kindergarten was just an extended base babysitting service, learning how to tie shoes, color, take naps, have snacks, and the like. But as our education system has continued to grow and evolved with the new rigors of our modern education system, and Arizona households have expanded to both parents working and single parent households, kindergarten is now the new first grade. It is no longer about learning how to tie your shoes on a block of wood. It is now reading it's addition and it's important learning that many children will not get at home. By eliminating the arbitrary percentages in the former classroom site fund and doubling the amount of funds available to local school districts, this proposal will make it possible for more and more families to have access to high quality, voluntary, full day kindergarten. Excuse me. <clears throat> Another great example of why this proposal to double funding and increase flexibility through the classroom site fund makes sense for our schools in the emphasis of local control by our locally elected school boards. Whether it's school resource officers, nurses, reducing classroom size by hiring more teachers, or simply investing in teacher compensation, Every community is different, and every locally elected school board should have the ability to strategically invest these incremental resources in the methods they feel will most effectively enhance their student successes. So here we are today <clears throat> at ABC 15 Studios at a wonderful event being produced by the Phoenix Business Journal with over 30 members of the legislature business leaders from the Greater Phoenix Ch Chamber of Commerce, Southern Arizona Leadership Council, Greater Phoenix Leadership, and education leaders from across the state, teachers, superintendents, and the co-founders of Save Our Schools. Now is the time for your elected leaders to hear from you. Senator Kate Brophy McGee, Senator Sylvia Allen, and many others have worked diligently throughout the interim to find plausible solutions to the education issues we all wish to address. I support sending a penny, ballot, penny to the ballot in 2020 to increase funding for our children's education and look forward to working with everyone to ensure we have additional funding for our educational system. I support over $800 million in classroom site fund dollars, $250 million in in-state tuition dollars, and to make college more affordable for all Arizonans, and distributing trade and workforce development dollars to our community colleges. Do you? For those of you who would like to see more, I believe that raising the ex expiring Proposition 301 to a full penny and it is the appropriate increase at this time. I support the flexibility of local control, which is ingrained in this proposal, 
give each locally elected school board, whether rural or urban, the chance to invest their local dollars toward their students' priorities. And for those of you who are not happy with a proposal that relies on sales tax, I personally believe that funding education is everyone's responsibility, which is why I support the sales tax that ensures that every Arizonan participates in our economic development and investing in our schools. <clears throat> John Whiteman, who is a philanthropist, businessman, and community leader, recently said, there is nothing more regressive than not appropriately funding Arizona schools. And for those of you who know me, I am a huge football fan, and I believe there is no quote more appropriate for this opportunity for our state than that said by former National Football League Commissioner Phil Tagliabu, who was commissioner during 17 years of peace between team owners and the Football League Labor Union when he said, we cannot let perfect be the enemy of good. Ironically, I would describe Arizona's voters choosing to strategically, flexibly, and permanently invest over $1 billion of annual funds to Arizona's public school systems, not just to be good, but to be great. Now is the time for the business community and education community to share their voices in supporting our vision for a penny for Arizona's education future. Thank you.